check it out guys, the wall, it still exists. Yeah, it's awesome. So today, uh, Invisible War, which is The Undying Legion book one. It's written by a guy named Joe Kasabian, who has also done podcasts and stuff. Like he has the Lions Led by Donkeys podcast is probably the most notable one. I read one of his books a couple of years ago, The Hooligans of Kandahar, and that one was pretty good. However, that one's autobiographical, so this is the first book of his I've read that is actually fictional. Also, you should not confuse this book, Invisible War, with the video game Deus Ex Invisible War. Just to, just to clarify. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. So the basic setup of this story is really, really good and really cool, and I liked it a lot. It's sometime far in the future, main character guy lives in this de depressing, dystopian cyberpunk world, and then through a series of unfortunate events, he dies, and after he dies, his consciousness gets uploaded into something called a blank, and he becomes a member of the Undying Legion, which means he's just now part of an army being used to go off and fight aliens. And keep in mind that the average person does not know about this war that's going on, and they don't know about the Undying Legion. This is just a thing that happens sometimes when people die. And if that sounds awesome, if that sounds like a really neat setup, well, that's because it is. And it does succeed in some ways, but it also fails in a lot of others, and so overall I would just say this book is all right. You know, it, it needed some heavy editing in order to properly work. I think it would be enjoyable if you're into science fiction, but if you're not into science fiction, this is probably not going to change your mind. So the story, like I said, it follows the main character whose name is Sargus Hakopian, or Hakobian. Sometimes it's spelled with a P, sometimes it's spelled with a B. That's a that's another issue I'll get to later. And like I said, he's just a regular guy living on Earth in the far future. He's a science fiction author with a Armenian last name. He, he's also in his mid-30s and is starting to... His hair's starting to go thinning is mentioned at one point, so... <laughs> All right, Mr. Kasabian, like, they tell you to write what you know, but you gotta use a little more imagination than that. Come on, dude. But Earth is a cyberpunk dystopia. It's just ruled by somebody who's only ever referred to as the Techno King and his royal cabal. And, you know, it's, again, classic cyberpunk dystopia. There's technology all over the place, a massive divide between rich people and poor people. There's advertisements literally being projected inside your head. Uh, the, the corporations control the entire economy. It's basically impossible to make it in the world unless you're already born in the upper classes, you know, stuff like that. And honestly, I think this beginning section is my favorite part of the book just because the book really leans into it and it becomes darkly humorous at several points. So it's not just doom and gloom, it is very funny. So I think the beginning section before Sargus even joins the Undying Legion is probably my favorite part of the book. But like I said, through a series of events that I don't want to spoil here, Sargus winds up dying, and then his brain gets uploaded to a blank. So he's just on a space station now, surrounded by other people who, after they died, they got their consciousness uploaded into a blank. It's like a... It's an artificial body. It's not a machine body. It's a... It's biological. Uh, and any time they die when they're out in combat, like get shot or something, then they just get uploaded to a new body. And just now they're part of the Undying Legion. This is their, their new job forever. And like I said, most people don't know about it. And the rest of the book is largely just Sargus getting used to his new life, meeting his new soldier friends, and then going out and fighting aliens. There's some big twists about what exactly is the nature of all this and what is going on. I felt they were fairly predictable, but I've also read a lot of science fiction before, so if you haven't, maybe this will be less predictable for you. I don't know. But like I said earlier, the book was overall enjoyable, but it needed some heavy, heavy editing to make it work. Like, this doesn't feel like a first draft, but it does feel like maybe a second or third draft, where the story is pretty well thought out, and it does have, I, I, I don't know, like, I don't think the outline is the right word, but the shell of the story, let's say, is in good shape, and some of the innards are working, so it all holds together, but it just isn't as good as it could be. You know, this needed another rewrite. For example, there's a really large cast in this book, or at least relatively large considering how long the book is, but other than Sargus, they have maybe one personality trait apiece. 
sometimes two. Like there's another character called Noah who had a little bit more to them, but for the most part it's really just Sargus interacting with all these other people who don't really feel like people so much as props to be used in the story. Also, I think literally every character in this book who we find out what their last name is, I think literally all of them have an Armenian last name. So, uh, I, I guess congratulations to Armenia on your, your upcoming cultural victory. You know, you had a difficult hundred years or so, but you, you pulled through. You, you did it. Good job. This, this is not actually an Armenian flag. It's the flag of Artsakh, but it, I figured it was close enough. Good, good job, Armenia. There's a lot of action sequences in this book, like enough that I would classify it tenuously as military science fiction, which is a genre I really like, and it is kind of nice to read military science fiction that isn't slightly fascist, <laughs> but whatever, that's another video I did many years ago. But there's a lot of action sequences here, and they're all written pretty well, like I enjoyed all of them in a vacuum, but they just didn't have enough build-up to make me really care about them while they were going on. You know, I was just kind of mildly amused by it as opposed to being, you know, edge of my seat, this is gripping action, let's go. For example, the first action sequence happens literally a couple of pages after Sargus wakes up in his new body. Like, they go off to conquer a barbarian planet of, like, insectoid, humanoid, alien things, uh, and because they have such low, uh, such a low technological level, the Undying Legion is just given swords and shields to go fight them with. And it's not very efficient, and there's actually several things about the Undying Legion that don't make a whole lot of sense, but the characters just kind of brush it off by saying that it's probably just the Techno King and the Royal Cabal using them for entertainment. You know, it's just more entertaining to watch dudes with swords and spears fight each other as opposed to guys with swords and spears getting completely obliterated from orbit, I assume. But anyways, that happens, like, immediately, and we're not given proper context to really understand what's going on other than they're gonna genocide all these aliens and then human settlers are gonna come and colonize the planet and take it over. And, I mean, I guess that's kind of the point, is that the Undying Legion is constantly going off on these missions and they have very little downtime between all these missions and whether they live or die, it doesn't really matter because they're just gonna keep coming back and they're just doing this forever. So maybe that was deliberate, maybe that was an artistic choice to make it feel like this is a pointless battle, or not a pointless battle, but a battle that Sargus doesn't really understand, so we don't really understand it either. Really? I swear to God. <laughs> My phone stays silent all frickin' day and then I start filming, it starts shooting off like crazy. But whether it's a stylistic choice to have the battles specifically feel pointless and feel confusing, that, that can work for a little while, but immediately after that battle's over, the book just jumps into the next one. And again, in a vacuum, it's written pretty well, but like, we're just not given enough context to really understand it, so it's hard to, uh, it's hard to care that much. Another issue is that we don't really understand that much about the technology of this world and the technological level of it, uh, particularly with regard to weapons that they use in combat, because after the first battle where they're using swords and shields, they pretty much just use their future tech for the rest of that. And pretty much all we know is that, yeah, the blanks get re-uploaded if they die, their bodies are much tougher than regular human bodies, they have pulse rifles which are really powerful, that's about the most we get, which is a problem because military science fiction is a genre that's near and dear to my heart, and in order for it to properly work, in order for your audience to like really get into the battle and understand what's going on, you need to understand the capabilities of both sides. You need to understand the numbers that both sides have, you need to understand the geography and the area that they're fighting in and uh, who has advantages and disadvantages based on that. You need to understand like the power and range of their weapons, because if you don't understand all that, then it's very easy for these battles which on paper sound awesome and huge and cool, but they can just come across as action figures smashing into each other with no real rules and no real sense of stakes and no real sense of tactics or strategy, and then eventually one side wins. So it's just not very satisfying when one side, when that, yeah, it's not very satisfying when that one side wins and it's, we're not really fearing what happens if they lose. Especially with the Undying Legion because even if they lose, 
they're just gonna get re-uploaded and then come back and fight again. And this works okay for the early battles, but by the time the climax happens, which is supposed to be, you know, the big emotional crescendo of the story, I was just not getting into it, you know? Like, I, I still wanted to see where these characters were going and everything, but I was kind of just hoping the action would move out of the way so the story could happen, which is not what you want. This book, like a lot of science fiction, also brings up some really interesting ideas, and we see these uh, neat societies, most notably the cyberpunk one at the beginning, and I wanted more time exploring those. You know? Like, it, it feels sometimes like it just brings up these neat ideas and societies, and we get a little bit of time with them, and it does give you some food for thought, but then we just move past it because, well, the story needs to get going. And that was disappointing. And you might have noticed a common pattern uh, among my criticisms here. That's that this book needed to be a lot longer. Like, I'd say at least 30% longer, because the copy I have is pretty short. It's about 255 pages, and then there's some, like, acknowledgments and stuff after that. It's, it's a quick read. And even for 255 pages, it has a blisteringly fast pace. Like, there's always something happening. There's very little downtime between the big moments. If the book had slowed down and made itself, well, let's just say 50 pages longer, it would still be a pretty short book, but it would be able to spend those 50 pages, you know, developing the characters some more, because like I said, other than Sargus, most of them just aren't that memorable, uh, develop their relationships more, have us spend some more time with the Undying Legion when they're not actually fighting, so we see a bit more about what they're like and what their downtime is like, and again, we have soldiers that have been there for hundreds of years, like, what are those guys like? That, that I'd be interested in seeing them, but we just don't get to see that. And so, most of the time with uh, books, I think that they could be cut down and be made shorter, but this one is the opposite. It, it really should have been substantially longer than it is. I also found more than a few spelling and grammatical errors sprinkled throughout this. You know, like, there, I mentioned a character called Noah earlier. Noah's non-binary, so most of the time they are referred to as they, but there are a couple of lines where Noah's referred to as a she instead, and like, an editor should have caught that. There's a character named Ovakian, but there was an instance where they were called Ovankian instead. Uh, and like I mentioned earlier, uh, Sargus's last name is Hakopian with a P, but there are one or two points where it's spelled Hakobian with a B, and Granted, I don't speak Armenian. It's possible that B and P are just very similar there, and it, it could be translated as both, but if you're going to do that, you gotta pick one and stick with it for the whole book, otherwise it just gets weird and confusing. Just, you know, a couple of errors like that spread throughout, but I've also noticed that happening a lot more often with stuff I read in the past, like, two or three years, which is probably a bad sign for the publishing industry as a whole. Like, I, I've been hearing that, like, experienced editors and agents have been leaving in droves, so... I, I don't think that bodes well, <laughs> but whatever. The point is, Invisible War did have spelling and grammatical errors. Like I said, this, this did need another rewrite, and it needed a better proofreader. Overall, I, I generally have a lot more trouble talking about books that are just average or just sort of alright than I do talking about books that are really bad or really good, or especially books that have like an interesting setup and then wind up being really bad, those I like talking about a lot. But average books are usually harder for me to really get into the weeds of what made them work and what made them didn't. But, or and what didn't make them work? Wait. <laughs> average books are harder to really get into the weeds of what worked and what didn't. But with this one, it's kind of an exception because Again, the setup is great, and when it works, it works really well, but there is a lot of stuff dragging it down. And while I am excited for the sequel, I just hope the author takes his time on it and really goes to town and polishes it and makes it work. But, uh, I don't know. I think if the idea for the story sounds interesting to you, then go check it out, because you probably will be satisfied by that. But if you're not a fan of science fiction, or if the setup of a guy being conscripted into an immortal army doesn't interest you, then I don't think reading the book is going to change your mind. But that's all. Uh, thanks for watching. Goodbye. Hello, friends. This is the part where all my patrons' names go on the screen here. Or not all of them, but my $5 and up patrons. And my $10 and up patrons are 
Arthur D. Gonzalez Martin, Brother Santodes, Carolina Clay, Ich bin Langweilig, Kiana Arms, Lexi Delorme, Liza Rudakova, Lord Tiebreaker, Mel Reeds, Michael and Katie Hake, Proscriptions of Zhuo Jang, Rovi, Psych XS, Tesla Shark, Toa Michael, Vevictus, Wesley, and Zenitech89. Thanks to all of you. You're all great. If you want to get your name on here and also get early access to my videos and exclusive content and, you know, the fun kind of stuff like that, then consider donating on my Patreon page or becoming a YouTube channel member. Or if you don't feel like doing that, rate the video, comment on the video, subscribe to the channel, you know, the stuff that I'm supposed to say. I don't know. I imagine that if you like my stuff enough that you're watching all the way to this point, you're probably already subscribed and you're probably already liking this and sharing it around, <laughs> but I don't know. It's, it wouldn't hurt to tell people about that. Anyways, uh, I guess someone's still watching at this point. I'm just completely rambling right now. Goodbye.